thought we had conquered it. I thought we had moved on. But somehow, the one billion lions versus every Pokemon debate has returned. About a year ago, I threw my hat into this eternal ring and tried to prove that it is mathematically impossible for 1,000 some odd Pokemon to beat 1 billion lions in a fight. But recently, I've seen a new wave of arguments from Camp Pokemon in the form of this meme. Parish Song is an attack in Pokemon that has a pretty simple effect. If you were on the field when it was used, in three turns, you'll be dead. It's kind of like the tape from The Ring, except it's just a really out of tune harmonica. Unlike other multi-hit moves like Earthquake, Parish Song can affect every single Pokemon on the field, even in a triple battle. So, a Pokemon must simply use this attack, hit all 1 billion lions on the field, and then wait for everyone to die except for the few Pokemon with the ability Soundproof who won't be affected. And there you go, the Pokemon win, simple as that. However, while this meme may seem simple, between these frames hides an insane double, triple, corkscrew, backflip, quadruple, moonsault, elbow drop from the top rope level of mental gymnastics. While y'all were out here having your little playground debates, I was studying the most complicated branch of physics I have ever seen. This is not a theory. This is the truth. This is why Parish Song couldn't beat one billion lions. Richard, uh, hit that intro. To understand why this problem is so much more complex than it seems, we need to go back to a concept I talked about in my previous video. Because the Pokemon are outnumbered 1 million to 1, if they want to stand any sort of a chance, they need ways to take out multiple lions in one go. The most obvious way to do that is with multi-hit moves like Earthquake or Surf, which can hit every Pokemon adjacent to you. In a double battle, that would be, well, just everyone. But in a triple battle, if you're all the way on the left, you can't reach anyone who's all the way on the right. It's this principle that I focused on last time. If we know that a move like Earthquake has enough range to hit the Pokemon next to you, but not enough to hit the Pokemon on the far side, then we know that its maximum range must be somewhere between these two. Then we just needed to find out how big a Pokemon battlefield was, and how many lions you could cram into that space, and we could find out how many lions each Pokemon could take out per attack. However, Parish Song has no such limitation. It doesn't matter where you are on the field, if you hear those two dissonant harmonica chords, you best start getting your affairs in order. So, by the logic of the last episode, surely that must mean that Parish Song has no maximum range, and it can affect a lion no matter how far away they are, right? Well, not so much. The reason we were able to calculate the range for a move like Earthquake was because we knew the minimum and maximum possible values. With Parish Song, we know that at minimum, it is big enough to hit everyone on a Pokemon battlefield, but we don't know the maximum. Now, that's not to say that it doesn't have a maximum, it just means that we don't know. It could be barely large enough to cover a Pokemon battlefield, it could be 20 miles, it could be 2 million miles. However, simply saying that Parasong can hit everyone on this field, therefore it can hit everyone on any field, isn't a valid assumption. Consider this example. Say I send you into a store with a wallet. You don't know how much money is in that wallet, but I tell you that it's enough to afford anything in this store. Now, that doesn't mean you could head over to super expensive R Us next door and buy yourself a new hot tub, because what I didn't tell you is that you're actually in the dollar store, and that wallet only contains two dollars. 
You can afford anything in this store, not anything in any store. For that reason, we are not able to determine a definitive range or lion killing capacity for Parish Song using evidence from the games alone. Now, I could just end the video there. Parish Song can't hit a lion on a field of any size. Another dub for Team Lions. But I think we can do a little bit better than that. We may not be able to get an exact measurement for the range of Parish Song from the games, but we could probably calculate an answer that's at least in the right ballpark. Parish Song is a sound-based move. Any Pokemon that hears it will faint in three turns. So, all we have to do is answer the question, how far can sound travel before you can't hear it anymore? A very simple question with an equally simple answer. Oh. Yeah, so it turns out that acoustics, the study of sound, is one of those fields that seems super easy on the surface, but gets insanely complicated fast. Seriously, I thought I'd just have to find some simple equation where you plug in an initial volume and you get the distance that sound could travel. Then, literally 20 minutes later, I'm messaging physicists on Reddit in a panic and reading the densest Wikipedia articles that have ever been written. One of the reasons why acoustics is so complicated is because of the way that sound is measured. You may have heard of the decibel, the unit that we use to quantify how loud or quiet a sound is. However, unlike most units, the decibel is not an absolute measurement. It's a relative one. You can only ever use it to describe something's volume compared to something else. You can't just say, this sound was 30 decibels without more context. That doesn't actually mean anything. To make matters worse, decibels are on a logarithmic scale, meaning that a sound measured to be 30 decibels will be twice as loud as a sound measured at 20 decibels. And this gets really weird when you start getting closer and closer to a sound and realize that every sound is technically infinitely loud at its source. And you also have to account for the medium the sound is traveling through, the ambient absorption, dynamic viscosity, angular frequency, fluid dynamic. <laughs> so to keep things simple, we're going to be starting as basic as possible. What is sound? Well, in the most literal sense, sound is a pressure wave. When you make a sound, you disturb the air molecules in the air around you. Those molecules in turn disturb molecules next to them, which then disturbs the one next to them, and so on as the wave travels out. When people think of sound waves, they usually picture something like this, a 2D wave shape. But in reality, they're more like spheres, ever expanding. As the sphere grows, the surface area of that sphere also grows, meaning the sound wave is more spread out and, in general, quieter. Scientists have been able to quantify this using what is called the inverse square law, which states that the intensity of a sound is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source, the square coming from the formula for the surface area of a sphere. So basically, the further a sound goes, the quieter it gets, but it doesn't decrease at a constant rate. Now, it's important to note that intensity is different from volume. A decibel is the ratio of two known intensities at different distances from the sound source. It's generally accepted that a volume of zero decibels is the threshold for hearing. So, if Parison can affect anyone who hears it, then all we gotta do is calculate how far it can travel before the volume decays to zero, right? No, of course it's not that simple! As it turns out, having a sound of zero decibels is mathematically impossible! Remember, a decibel is a ratio of intensities, so the only way for a sound to reach zero decibels is if the final measured intensity is zero. But based on the inverse square law, we know that the intensity is inversely proportional to the distance, and as the distance approaches infinity, the intensity approaches zero. But it never actually reaches it. The intensity can get 
very, very, very close to zero, but it will never be exactly zero. That means that a sound can travel a near infinite distance and still technically be hearable. And given enough time, you'll hear every sound that has ever been made on this planet. So what, does that mean Team Pokemon was right? Parasong actually does have infinite range? Well, not exactly. Uh, I mean, clearly, or else the first time anyone used this move, it'd be a wrap for life on this planet. And there actually is some science to back this up. You technically could hear any sound above zero decibels if it were the only sound around, but it's not. This world is pretty loud most of the time, which means that quiet sounds can get drowned out by louder ones. It's like trying to have a conversation while standing on a nest. So in reality, it's generally agreed that a sound can only truly be heard if it is more than half the volume of the ambient noise around it, or no less than 10 decibels lower. Any quieter, and your ears cannot distinguish it from the other sounds around you, and therefore you cannot hear it. In general, nature has an ambient noise level of around 50 decibels, meaning that for a sound to be distinguishable, it must be at least 40 decibels in volume. So, in order to find the distance at which a pair song will fall below 40 decibels, we need to know two things. It's volume in decibels at some other point closer to the source, and the rate at which the volume decays. The second question is either super easy or stupidly complicated, depending on how accurate you want to get. But this is a video about a fictitious creature singing a fictitious army of lions to death, so I'm gonna do the easy one. Assuming that this battle is taking place in a completely flat arena, filled with a completely homogeneous noble gas, the volume of a sound will decrease by 6 decibels every time you double the distance you're measuring at. As for the initial volume, this one's a bit tricky. There are 17 Pokemon that can learn Parish Song that all vary in size, and therefore will produce sounds of different intensities. But here's the thing, that seems like a lot of work, and I don't want the Pokemon believers coming at me saying that I somehow cheated, I'm not afraid of the truth. So I'm going to give the Pokemon the biggest benefit of the doubt that I can. The loudest non-aquatic animal on Earth is the African Cicada, which is capable of producing a sound of 107 decibels measured at a distance of 50 centimeters. Let's assume that every Pokemon that can learn Parasong can produce a sound of this volume, even if they don't have the biology to back that up. If the volume decreases by 6 decibels every time you double the distance, that means that at 1 meter it will be 101 decibels, at 2 meters it will be 95, and so on. If we keep following this trend, we find that the sound of a cicada will need to travel a distance of 1,149 meters, nearly 3 quarters of a mile, before it's lost to the din of the ambient sound. And so, after all that, 1,149 meters is our final range for Parish Song. So how many lions is that? First, we can find the total area that a Parish Song can cover by plugging our range into the formula for the area of a circle, pi r squared, to find that Parish Song can cover an area of 4,148,326.14 meters squared. Now, we just need to find out how many lions that could conceivably cover. In my last video, I determined that the average area for a lion was around 0.557 meters squared. Multiply that by 1 billion, and you find that 1 billion lions covers an area of 557,418,240 meters squared, which is a lot, lot more than the area for one parish song. So, there you have it. 
A simple parish song is physically incapable of affecting all one billion lions at once. But then again, Pokemon don't need to use just one parish song. They could theoretically fire off a whole bunch of parish songs to cover more ground. Assuming that the maximum number of lions were perfectly packed within the area of each parish song, using some simple division, we can find that you would need 134.37 parish songs to KO all 1 billion lions. Oh, 135, since there's no half PP in Pokemon. There are 17 Pokemon that can learn Parish Song naturally. At a maximum of 8 PP per Parish Song, that means that the Pokemon can use Parish Song a grand total of 136 times. Enough to cover all 1 billion lions with exactly one Parish Song left over. Huh. I'll be honest, this was a bit, uh unexpected but as i've said i am a man of science and if nothing else that means that i'm willing to admit when i'm wrong richard get that intro back in here because it turns out that in an ideal case parish song could beat one billion lions the lion deniers may have had to do a quadruple axle super duper five star frog splash to justify it but against all odds they've pulled it off. Or did they? True, in an ideal world, this strategy could work. But we don't live in an ideal world. There is one factor with regards to sound that we didn't account for here, and that is absorption. We could use the six decibels per double distance rule as a sort of cheat, but in reality, there are loads of factors that determine how far sound can travel. For example, sound travels further in a material like water than it does in air. There are many reasons for this, perhaps the greatest being that water is denser than air, meaning it's easier for the molecules to influence one another and maintain that pressure wave. But it's not just the state of the medium that matters, the quality of the air itself can greatly affect how far and fast sound travels. Uh, not to mention landscape features that might obstruct or reflect sound's path, and the manner in which sound waves affect each other. At first I wanted to try to account for all of this, but determining the sound absorption of a space requires you to find four different values that all require several college level lectures to fully understand. I'll be honest, I've done a lot of reading these past few days already, and I still don't feel confident enough in my understanding to try to explain it to you. But the important thing is this, the sound of a parish song probably won't actually reach the 1,149 meter mark that we calculated. There's also the problem of lion density. This is assuming that lions are basically grouping up for these para songs like they're going to a Taylor Swift concert, which isn't very realistic. In reality, lions prefer to operate in smaller prides. A single pride can typically contain up to 40 lions that work together to maintain a very strict and sprawling territory. It's very rare to find lions of different prides peacefully occupying the same space in the wild. Realistically, if you position yourself just right in the corner of four territories, you might be able to get 160 lions per song, far from the over 7 million that you need. In the end, while Parasong is technically capable of taking out 1 billion lions, if I were a Team Pokemon advisor, I probably wouldn't recommend trying it. Still, if this video has proven anything, it's that, just like the science of acoustics, this age-old problem is far more complicated than most people think. It's certainly more complicated than I thought at first. Now, if you'll excuse me, I played the Paris song tune like five times during this video, so I'm pretty sure I got like seven seconds left to live and oh wait, but that means that you guys also heard it. Oh shoot, my bad. Oh god, I got I really screwed both of us over. I this was a 
and a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. Thank you.